Did you feel it? I'm talking about something about a year ago, actually. It's 7-11 on Sunday morning, and we're talking about uh, the earthquake that shook the East Coast last year. Lots of folks in Connecticut felt it. It was August 23rd, measuring 5.8 and uh, centered in Virginia, but was felt from Georgia all the way up to Canada, causing quite a bit of damage, too. Now, here to tell us more about earthquakes and what you need to know to stay safe is renowned seismologist Dr. John Ebel, a professor of Earth and Environmental Sciences at Boston College, also the director of the school's Western Observatory. You're looking at him right there. So, Dr. Ebel, what happened in Virginia? Well, what happened in Virginia was, was uh, there was a fault that slipped and moved. Mm -hmm. It just took a few seconds for it to do that. But that released vibrational waves that were literally felt all over the East Coast. Why was it felt so far? Well, it's just like imagine a, a smooth pool with water, throw a pebble in, the waves spread out, they spread out farther and farther and farther. Earthquake waves do the same thing. Hard to picture that land actually acts much the same way that water would or even air perhaps, but I guess it does. Uh, land very much will vibrate when it gets hit by a sudden movement like earthquakes. Now I noticed too that uh, people just asking friends around Connecticut for example, did you feel it? Some did, some didn't. Would it depend a lot on the building that you're in or maybe the ground around it? Uh, it depends upon both actually. Uh, soft ground, for instance, uh, river soils, landfill, uh, unconsolidated sediments, as we call them, will shake more strongly than, for instance, hard rock. Okay. And then some buildings naturally shake more strongly than others. So you can have one person who felt it very strongly, the next person next door said, what earthquake? Interesting. Now, by the way, how, we're looking at Washington here and some of the things that uh, were affected, you know, the Washington Monument, there were cracks found there. The National Cathedral, also uh, I believe some issues with the Capitol building itself. Well, the quake uh, forced evac evacuation even closer to home here. Uh, the New Haven open at Yale, also uh, Bridgeport uh, had some issues going on. There's some shaking there going on in Washington. Probably the safest place to be was in that helicopter. Um, but just how seismically active is the East Coast? We, don't, we always think of the, the West Coast, the, the ring of fire out in the Pacific. Well, what I tell people is if you go out to California and monitor earthquakes for one year, come here to the East Coast, monitor earthquakes, you have to wait 100 years to get the same number of earthquakes. I see. Okay. So we have earthquakes as strong as they have had on the West Coast, but they're just much, much less frequent. And so we're more surprised by them when they do occur. So let's talk earthquake safety. What do people need to know? Because especially around this area where it's so infrequent, West Coast people probably, oh, it's just old hat, a little shaker. Well, that's a really important question. People are hurt in earthquakes by things falling on them. And in, in buildings, the, the most vulnerable parts of buildings are the very stiff, brittle parts that will break. Uh, bricks, uh, stone, masonry, things like that. In a typical home, the chimney's the first thing that breaks. In a city, brick walls will break. I tell people stay inside a building, get under a table or, or under a heavy piece of furniture. Mm -hmm. Don't go running outside because you could be safe inside, but if you go running outside, you could run right into the bricks that are falling off the uh, chimney of your house. Oh, I guess that's a good point. Now, if you're already outside, should you stay outside? If you're outside, you get away from buildings, get yeah. away from where things can fall on you, get away from power lines, uh, get away from windows, which can break and, and come out of buildings. So as long as nothing can hit you, you're safe. So these, uh, these tips that are on the screen now, it's to secure it now. Let's start with that. What, what, what does that mean? Well, uh, what that means is, for instance, if you have a water heater in your home, mm -hmm. it can move around. And if it breaks and breaks the gas line, you can have a fire. Uh, where is a safe place to go? In a, in a doorway, under a piece of furniture. Um, and then have disaster kits is, is very important, too. So that after the earthquake, if you've lost electricity, if you've lost water, you still have, have the ability to, to survive. And there's a few more, I believe, that we can put up on a second screen here. Uh, yeah, drop, cover, and hold on. I See, I call for unrestrained panic myself, but that's just me. Um, now, you're saying after the quake, check it out. What are we checking out? Oh, you check out things, for, for example, you check to be sure that there are no gas leaks. That would mm -hmm. be the first thing in a typical home. Uh, you check to see if there's any fire, if it's winter and, and you had a fire going in the fireplace. Be sure that you didn't have coal spill out. So, so check for, for common safety things after a big disaster, and not just earthquakes, but same thing you would do after, after a hurricane or windstorm or, or, or maybe a bad snowstorm. Doesn't hurt to do a roll call either, it looks like. Absolutely. And as a side note to this, by the way, we were talking during the break, I found out not too long ago that one of the most seismically dangerous parts of the country is in the Midwest, the New Madrid in Missouri. They call that? The New Madrid seismic oh, New zone. New Madrid, okay. That's exactly right. It had big earthquakes, uh, magnitude 7.5 in 1811 and 1812, larger than the World Series earthquake in San Francisco in 1989. No kidding. 
Yeah, I've heard that maybe that's possibly due or overdue. Anyway, the East Coast, we're not immune, right? We're not immune. We live in earthquake country, too. Dr. John Ebel, you're a very fascinating guy to talk with, and, uh, and Eric is going to be talking with you more in just a little bit. We don't always do these two-parters, but you know what? You're worth it, certainly. Uh, you know, we're going to talk uh, a little bit more in just a bit, but for more information, as of the moment, go to WTNH.com.